Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Now today I'm very excited. I've never done a video like this, and I'm doing three brunch idea recipe thingamabobbers. Now, this beautiful goddess you see standing next to me is one of my dear friends, Tiffany, or Tifferelli on Instagram, and she is not only an amazing person, she's also an amazing cook. Now, Tiffany and I, wow, actually did a tea talk together a couple of months ago that you have to watch if you wanna to get to know Tiffany's beautiful soul. I will link it down below. Now, as you can see, these recipes are <laughs> incredible. So let's go ahead and hop right in. Galettes are probably my favorite dessert. You can make them with any kind of fruit you want. I used peaches for this one. You can use cherries, berries, really any kind of soft fruit. And guys, literally this was so good. So here are all the ingredients you're gonna need. And she started off by taking about a cup of flour. I think that was about like three quarters of a teaspoon of sugar. And then she put in about a teaspoon of salt. Um, I'm gonna have the recipe down below because baking is a lot more like specific than cooking. So you can check all of that out. So then she whisked all the dry ingredients together and then took some butter and cut it up into cubes. And then she threw the butter cubes into the mixture. But it's really important that you don't, like that you keep the cubing like separate. You don't want it to all become completely blended together apparently because that helps keep the crust flaky. So then she felt like the mixture was a little too dry so we added in a little bit of water. This wasn't really so scientific. Just adding little bits till it became a little more squishy like dough like you can see here. And then she formed it into a ball and then we put it on some parchment paper. Let's do my best to go put this dough in the fridge. See you in two hours. Kidding. Movie magic. I say movie magic because she actually already had some dough. So it would need to sit in there an hour normally, not what we did because she had dough left over. Um, anyways, so this is how Tiffany cuts her peaches. She cuts it in a circle like an avocado and then peels out the pits. And after that, she diced the peaches so beautifully. Side note, Tiffany's got like nail goals. Honestly, I wish I had Tiffany's nails. And then we pulled the dough back out and put some flour on the countertop and rolled the dough out with our fancy rolling pin that I bought purposefully for this video. And look at me, I'm just watching Tiffany do everything. Ooh. And she actually, when she would roll it out, she would fold the dough over like paper and then roll it out again because she said that that helps to disperse the flour throughout the dough and really give it that flaky texture when it's done. So then she put the dough on the parchment paper and then we've gotten to the best part of the recipe, which is arranging the fruit. I think this is so beautiful and I was way too amused by this activity and watching her make like a flower out of peaches. How beautiful is this? And really any fruit you use, I just imagine this being stunning. But seeing these peaches just shaped into like this beautiful piled flower, I just love it. Loved it. So then she cracked an egg and whisked it up with a knife or a knife, a fork. And then you fold the edges of the pie dough over the sides of the fruit. And then you brush over the crust with an egg wash, which is basically just one egg that you mix up. And then what this is going to do is it's going to not only seal the crust the way that you folded it over, it's going to keep it in place, but it's also going to make this really nice, golden, shiny crust once it bakes up in the oven. So then she took some sugar and she, I don't know how to word this, piled it on in the center. I think it's to really help caramelize the fruit as it bakes. So then you want to sprinkle some coarse sugar, some turbinado sugar around the edges. And I feel like that really makes it like extra pretty. Ugh and extra yummy. And bake that for about 20 minutes. By the way, we have the oven set at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And then when you pull it out, this is what it looks like. Tell me that you don't smell this stuff through the screen, literally. Oh my gosh. <sighs> I'm dead. So, moving on to our next brunch recipe. Kale and eggs. This recipe is one of my absolute favorites to make for groups because it's so cheap and it's such easy cleanup and you can easily make a lot of it literally just using one pan. So here are all the ingredients you're gonna need. Super basic, just eggs, onion, kale, and butter. And she started off by rinsing the kale. I was really proud of her. There's so many times I do not rinse my produce. I was like, wow, Tiffany, hygiene game strong. <laughs> you start with 
an onion and you can slice it up, dice it, however I like to slice it. Yeah, she slices like a pro. Take notes, guys, because you will never see my knife game this strong. Actually, let's dream big. Maybe you will see my knife game this strong one day. But um, she cut up those onions. And you just sweat the onions in some butter over medium heat. Yeah, this was really interesting to watch her do this because she waited until the butter got frothy. Like that was the note that she gave me to wait till that point. Put the onions in, let them cook. Here we are looking like adorable Southern besties just hanging out, cooking brunch, just chatting about all the hot gossip. And um, she just stirred the onions. And then once the onions go translucent, you add a few handfuls of kale and you toss that around. You can add your salt and pepper at this point. And the kale's going to cook down pretty quickly, so you don't want to overdo it. Once the kale cooks down a little bit, you want to crack a few eggs over the kale. I usually do about two per person. And then once the eggs are in there, you can add a little bit more salt and pepper, and then you want to cover the pan and steam the eggs. So if you keep an eye on them, once the yolks form a white film over the top, you can leave them steaming a little bit longer if you like your eggs more well done, or you can just take them off the heat and leave them covered, or you can just serve them if you want them super runny. So good. By the way, I like my eggs over medium. Not that you needed to know that, but moving on to the next recipe. This recipe is definitely the most exciting one that I've been making lately because Ooh. it seems so much fancier than it actually is. Yeah, she's totally right. It seems super intimidating, but it's really easy. And here are all of the ingredients you're gonna need. It consists of basically a mushroom and shallot gravy. And you're gonna make that gravy by taking your mushrooms and finely chopping them up into little baby cubes. And then once she peeled the shallot, the way that she cut this is straight lines down the center and then down the side, so it cubed the shallot. So once again, take notes, I do not cut this fancy and I was just in awe. So then she buttered up her pan and once again waited for the butter to get a little frothy and then threw the shallot and mushroom mixture into the bowl or the pan whatever this is called and waited for it to all cook now on the side in a pot she made a measurement as to how she's going to cook these eggs by sticking three ramekins in a pot and then filling up water and she just did that so she had the measurement of the water and then she took the um ramekins out heated up the pot and then once our mixture was complete, she poured some heavy cream into it. And so this is where she really created the gravy mixture. And then she let that simmer for a bit, stirred that around, added some salt and some pepper to the mix. And once you make that gravy, you spoon it into a ramekin or a few ramekins, however many people that you're serving. And you crack one egg into each of the ramekins and you're essentially poaching the egg in the gravy. So you'd have a pot simmering with about one inch of water and you put the ramekins with the gravy and the eggs into that pot, cover the pot and steam the eggs until the yolks form that little white film over the top. And then while that is going on, we made the bread, or Tiffany made the bread. There she is again with her fingernail bowls. Um, and she cut the baguette in half and then she cut the strips sideways, which I thought was a really cool, fancy way to cut the baguette. And then once again, she buttered down the pan. And once it got frothy, she laid the bread on top to toast. And we just let that get tasty toasty. And then you take the lid off and you pull the ramekins out with tongs. And you can serve them up with sliced toasted baguettes. You can serve it with biscuits. You can serve it with scones. Basically, really anything that could soak up, you can dip into the gravy or you can just eat it with a spoon. And then voila, we have our brunch spread. Ooh. Guys, holy Toledo, so good. The sweetness mixed with the savoriness or whatever you call it. Like, I just, I can't believe that we made this, that this was food that like was just made in the kitchen. I feel like it's so fancy and you could impress your friends and your family, but you could do it on a really cheap budget and really easily. You don't really have to have much cooking experience. So um, happy brunching guys. Now we're gonna try the fruit, even though the food, even though spoiler alert, it was amazing. Okay, so this has taken so much self restraint for me to sit here for an hour. That is the train. And what are these bugs that everybody's probably hearing? The cicadas. That's why I probably shouldn't even be acknowledging them right before we stub our face. No, it's fine. No, we're, we're screened in. Yeah, yeah so we're good. We're safe. Yeah. Start with the bread, and I'm gonna dip it into this. Get in the yolk. Oh. Get in there. 
Obrigado por tudo que fez. Obrigado por estar aqui. Oh my gosh, te amo. What do you think? Guys, this is like my favorite recipe of all time. I cannot stop making it. Tiffany is so good. It's so good. I feel bad for you, Nan, that you're filming this instead of eating it. You could either dip with the bread or spoon. This is this is great because then you can get the yolk in there. Like, look at that. I'm having to stop myself to keep the rotation going. Here we go. I'm so excited. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. it's per it's perfect, dude. Well, cool. right. That's the healthiest one. <laughs> The onions in this dish, mm. good. It's so good. I can taste this one. That, so I'm just so you know, I'm not eating because gluten and dairy serious problem. But this one, it's just egg, onion, and kale. So I can. It's so ironic that you have such a hard time with kind of gluten and dairy, and you cook like this, right? Which are so good. The onions, the method that you did of the butter with the onions is just divine. Okay, now to be honest, everybody on my channel knows this. I'm not a huge sweet person, and I'm not a huge fruit dessert person. So, but I have a really good feeling about this because I kept smelling in the oven. See the plate? This is so brunch worthy, would you say? This is like the best brunch I've ever had. You just need some, you need, you need some mimosas or just, let's be honest, champagne. Mm -hmm. You Thank just make you. the most amazing food. Thank you so much for sharing this with all of us. It was a pleasure. Mm. Tiffany is not only an amazing cook, I think I already said this in the beginning, <laughs> not only an amazing cook, but just an amazing person. And also, I'm gonna link down below, Tiffany and I filmed a tea talk last time she was in California. And if you haven't seen it, I really recommend you go watch it because her story was literally life changing for me. And she knows this. And she's just had such an impact on me as a person and a friend. So I will link that down below. I'll have all of her stuff down below. And with that being said, happy brunching, people. Happy brunching. Bye. Cheers.